Hey guys, what's happening? So, I made uh, I'm making three videos of this different repairs on this Bronco. Uh, this is the last one. I've already done the others. Um, but um, ever since I've kind of, I mean, raised the Bronco, I mean, I have a three inch, uh, three and a half inch uh, suspension lift and a one inch body lift. But the, I mean, like every other person that has a Bronco, the the track bar is off by about an inch so it goes this way about an inch because it wants to pull it forward as you raise it it wants to pull it this way so it's kind of messing with my steering I have a rock car rock crawler uh, box it's I think it's called a 442 box or something like that where they take two different steering gears and um, like put them together they call it the rock car like Google like rock crawler box for Bronco um, so I have that on there and actually I already have the I upgraded to the adjustable uh, I think it's called the drag link for the steering um, but I noticed that my spring you can see that on that side right there is it's bowing this way so I wanted to uh, see if I could fix that maybe pound the spring cut back into shape um, and uh, let me show you I got I got over at Thomas Bronco adjustable drag link um, it's not like the Heim one I think it's like a hundred bucks show you it to you came with a couple bushings. I don't know if these are rubber or polyurethane. I'm trying to figure out. It's hard to say for sure. It feels like polyurethane? I don't know. So, the, you think if you lube rubber and polyurethane two different ways with two different kinds of stuff, um, like you use like a, like a silicone based lubricant for rubber. I think you use like either like a suspension, I can't remember, like, I, like lithium grease, or it's like a certain kind of grease that you use on polyurethane. It's different than rubber. So here it is, take it out of here, and it's sealed. But yeah, I want to take it apart and, and remove it, get it gone. And uh, yeah, suspension works usually one of the more difficult things. So in my other videos that are coming up after this one, I have a, um, I redid the main electrical system, the main 12 volt electrical system, not the whole car. I, mean, I did the whole car about 15 years ago. Um, like I did the main power, like the 12 volt, going to my my Holy ECU, all my all my electronics, my fan conversion, the electric fan. So uh, I just want to make everything a lot more cleaner. But you'll see that in the next video after this. But all right, so I got to figure out. I have a Dana 30 on there, the original Dana 30, the 1966. So yeah, if I could get the steering thing figured out. Well, I also noticed I started getting a lot of death wobble, and that's kind of why I started looking at this. Is that my bushing is all worn out? So I'm getting some kind of like uneven steering and death wobble. So um, I figured I'd just fix it the right way because it was going to cost me twenty dollars for the bushings anyway. So I was like, do I fix it the right way? Get it organized again, fixed again. So um, yeah, I'd also like to get the steering drop down link straight. Yeah, I already have the drag drag link drop down wrapped on wrapped on arm. So I tried to do it the right way, like when I did it before, drop down uh, drag link or a uh, track bar link. And also the lower pitman arm for the uh, drag link. So, um, all right, let's get it started. So I know this looks different than most people with this steering tape layers up here, which I'm going to take it and probably paint, take it off and repaint it. Um, is that um, it's mounted down here? I think most of the good people actually have it somehow mounted to the frame or something like that. Uh, but this is actually the way it originally came with the Bronco. That's how the guy had it. So, yeah, I'm going to take that off and redo it. And then hopefully you can make it see this. I can move it away. It's hard with the camera, but there's a insane amount of slop in here. And that's actually where it is. I noticed that when I started turning, right, is the frame, you could see the frame move back and forth with the tires, you know, like the frame would move first, like the frame would move this way. And then you could see like it was moving like an inch or half an inch before it even started turning the wheels. So it picked up the slot between the frame and here before it started turning the wheels. Um, all right. I've already taken the cotter pins off. Just got to get the bolts out. You know, it might not even be possible to mount the uh, steering stabilizer like this because the new track bar is actually a lot thicker and it's curved. So I'll have to see. But I might have to make a new bracket. CNC something, mill something, I'm not sure. Um, 
All right, so that's something else I gotta think about. Yeah, I forget how much of a headache those patching components are. It's just, they're hard, to, I mean, everything's, you know, super torqued down and it's heavy duty stuff, so. I've had this Bronco for probably 25 years. Um, so yeah, I've worked on this thing for 25 years. <laughs> Doing something every year for forever, man. Half my life. All right, so I think, since I'm doing all this, I'm gonna marry get some of these energy suspension ones maybe put something on my lathe maybe make make a, a spacer uh, because the goal is to um, you want to hit the bump stops before you bottom out your shocks and destroy your shocks so I gotta measure how much clearance I have but uh, I know they do actually make some pretty gnarly ones that you can actually get but I don't I mean, that's kind of a lot of clearance I just gotta measure the clearance between here and here it has to be less than the shock Alright, so I'm debating if I'm going to do that or not, but I might as well. It's $16 for the part. Like I said, I'm probably going to have to do some of my lathe to maybe bring it up a little bit, you know, create like some kind of a spacer. Alright, so everybody has their own way of doing the track bar alignment thing here. So I just grabbed some twine, put a couple of nuts on it, one on each side. And I don't know, like I said, I don't, I don't know if even this stuff's welded on straight you now, like I hear. Even though right now it looks like it's pretty aligned, I don't have the track bar on it. But what I'm going to do is grab my measuring tape. It's hard to do this with the camera in my hand, but I'm going to measure from the actual, uh, this part right here. I forget the name of this thing, like the spindle. Not the spindle, it's a. Uh, forget the name of that part. But um, I'm going to measure from here to there. That, that way, because I don't know if this stuff is totally welded on straight, but I know this should be even right here. So, like I said, I don't know if this, like, even this thing's on straight, like the. Uh, track bar mount, you know, in relation to the other one, you know. But I know this should be even though from here to there. So I'm gonna do that on both sides once I get the track bar in. I just threw some paint down, let it dry, and then, uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, everybody does it their own way. I mean, this is the best way I could think of, and it's just wrapped around like the shock, uh, the, the spring mount. All right, so I got my official poly lube from energy suspension. I'm not sure what kind of grease it is, but hands are greasy, but I'm going to totally lube this thing up before I put it in there on each side. Um, yeah, you can't just put like regular grease. It's, you know, there's a difference between silicone grease. I think it's like silicone is for rubber, like dielectric grease you can use on rubber. And then I think you can use this stuff, I don't, which I don't even know what, kind of, what it is. Or uh, like lithium grease on polyurethane. Yeah, I'm measuring it here between the frame rails because I don't really know. I mean, I've seen some other videos of people measuring it from the body. But I don't know how straight the body is. So, the concept will also, when you, when you mount this, it has to go away from the diff. There's like a curve on it. That way, in case you, when you go down, you clear the diff. Hopefully that makes sense. You'll see. It. Well, it's, it's, well, it's actually in your front of your face. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But So, to adjust it, I'm just going to twist it. It's easier to do it here. Make changes here and twist it like that. And then it is to sit there and try to do it up on the top here. All right, so I'm actually pretty close right now. But, uh, oh yeah, by the way, this lube is, this, <laughs> this lube is gnarly. How much it sticks to you. It's, uh, makes lithium grease like, uh, like an angel man compared to this stuff. Dude, this stuff's so hard to get off your hands. All right, this took me a while. I actually had to bust out my lathe. I had to trim down my castle nut. I wanted to add a washer on the back of it. I don't know if it comes stock with a washer or not. Um, so let me show you real fast here. It's about seven and three quarters on both sides. Somewhere in there, it's even on both sides though. Um, no, actually it's down here. So, it's even on both sides. That's what the rub does, the twine. So I measure, measure it between here and here. So now I need to, uh, when I'm straighten this out, so I'm gonna tighten this up to bring the uh, drop down, the pitman arm down straight, parallel. Because I kind of threw that out of whack when I did that. So, like when I straightened the car up, it threw this thing out of whack. So I'm gonna make this straight, straight this way. Yeah, it was easier just to pop the whole drag link. Um, get the right tools. If you have the right tools, things go so much faster. 
Alright, so that's the end of the track bar video. Well, I took it for a drive uh, yesterday and it actually made it worse. So what's funny is it's just amplifying. As I fix certain things, like the track bar, the steering shaft, um, it's actually amplifying the cause of the issue, the, the death wobble issue. Um, which I think is uh, in the steering gear. Like, it's not play in like the, the adjustment on the top. I mean, I've always done that. I've done that a million times. I've made videos about it too. Um, there's actually issues with play in the bearing here. So, I'm making another video about that. I'm going to take this power steering off right, right now, but order the parts for it. Um, I'm gonna take the power steering gear out and uh, replace the bearings and just look at you know what's going on with the shaft, the sector shaft, right here. Um, see if I can get that play out of it. But yeah, it's going, it's wobbling back and forth this way. So, um, but yeah, the track bar is cool. Looks awesome. Yeah, I mean, well, it amplified it because I don't, I, I, I drove took over a drive without my steering uh, stabilizer on there. So it just totally amplified the uh, issue. And it's not my length, I've already checked, this is a new drag link too. So, adjustable drag link. So, I know it's not there. Um, you know, you can just tell it's, it's nice and tight all around. Um, somewhere, man, something's creating it, man, I don't know. And like I said, the plays, you don't see the play if you do this. You have to like, turn it back and forth. So, all right, well, I mean, kind of a bummer they didn't solve it, but at least I'm going to have to get to the what actually is causing the issue. But this is pretty common for these Broncos to have death wobble, though. Um, but every single time I, I fix something, actually the play gets less, you know, the steering gets tighter, so. Um, all right, so I was hoping I have to take the gear to power steering gear up, but it's, it's sketchy to drive without it. i got to figure it out. All right, cool.